now, not that long ago, really. Mm. Right. Oh, and then I didn't even get to your um, the meat of your yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, I'm, about about work. I'm, I'm sure Tableau has a place in there somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So work.com has this command center, right? There's a Tableau. Uh, it's got Tableau as a part of it. So you plug Tableau into it anywhere you want, basically. Um, and in the demo version of uh, the command center, Tableau is showing... Um, you know how many cases are in your area and things like that so yep. it knows where you are and it pulls the data um it's all configurable it's a, it's just a lightning component uh, it's mostly lightning components or uh, lwcs right that you plug into the command center yep so uh when i tweeted that one i forgot which vendor i was working with but i've done a couple of really interesting tableau dashboards so the way I learned stuff, we we acquire these companies, and then like I'm at square zero, right? I have no mm -hmm. knowledge of tab. I had no knowledge of Tableau. The only way I could um, learn about these companies is for me to force myself to do a demo. Mm -hmm. So I think I in, in the use case of the the tweet, it was a um, it was an agricultural demo which had nothing to do with uh, work.com, and that's where I first used the Tableau dashboard because they had all this data. I can't show it to you. I, I, uh, I don't want to share my screen. I'll probably mess up everything. But um, Tableau was able to graphically depict, uh, it was solar pa panels connected to agricultural um, watering and monitoring stations, right? So it, it would water when it got too dry and it would send. Um, the problem was uh, the solar panels, uh, when they drop below a certain level, uh, you'd see this flat line on the Tableau graph, and you couldn't really see it. I mean, you, just, you get all this massive amount of data, right? I was pulling from Salesforce. I was reading the data uh, every minute, right? Because they want to see the data every minute. So I was just pulling it from Salesforce, uh, which I don't recommend. But they, their events, there weren't very many, very many events, and their, their payload was very small. So I just said, OK, we'll do that. Just see, Cause They want to see what we could do with AI and with um, Tableau. So. We bring the data in, and within a minute of just loading the, the Tableau dashboard showing temperature, uh, solar radiation, and uh, moisture, and watering, and things like that, you could see where it would flatline, and then, I, I'm sorry, you'd see the radiation drop, and then everything would flatline, right? Because mm -hmm. flatlining meant the station stopped reporting. Mm. But you wouldn't know that. It would say, so it got to 35 degrees. Um, Celsius, that's the wrong number. Anyway, whatever. It got to 20 degrees Celsius, uh, and then it would start reporting 20 degrees Celsius. Oh, it must be fine. It must be common temperature, right? But it wasn't fine because that was just the last reading before everything died, yeah. right? It just right. kept reporting 20. But then, but on the Tableau graph, you could see the radiation dropping and then the flat line, and then you knew, oh. There's an issue and, then, yeah. and then they took that data in uh, we had somebody from the Einstein team take the data in and do a predictive model on it using Einstein discovery, right? right? And that was really cool. Um, and if you can define an outcome, in this case, the outcome would be creating a case because the radiation level uh, dropped for n period of time, or maybe uh, you had multiple subsequent readings that were flatlined, right? The same reading uh, temperature and the same reading uh, humidity, uh, five readings in a row, that's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So you create a case and then you can see, okay, what's gonna cause, what, what level does the radiation have to drop to create a case? Mm -hmm. So you could do really cool things if you're able to define an outcome. Uh, for those of you who have played with Einstein discovery, uh, you probably understand what I'm saying. Otherwise, you're going to have to go watch the trailhead. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the use case myself for that at the moment. I can think of, of it being used in some projects. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the we do have some other, like, COVID use cases where we use Tableau, too, just because it showed, oh, I know what it was. It was the proximity that wasn't up on the... Oh, okay, okay. There's the other one. That's the that's the other one that was really cool that we used proximity for. I mean, used Tableau for. Mm -hmm. So you, it was a graph. Did I actually tweet the graph? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was like a floor okay. plan, I think it was. 
okay, there's a floor plan, but also the really compelling graph is when you can see all these anonymized beaking. Okay, so this thing, um, you can attach it to an employee yep. and it doesn't become, uh, that's an invasion of privacy for some people, right? But if it's beacon ID, this one is uh, 01070005, right? What the heck does that mean, right? You, you wouldn't yeah. know what that is unless you have a, a lookup table, which is what they're doing. They take this, um, they have a person account in Salesforce that has a lookup table that looks up this beacon, this beacon is, is assigned to Charlie, therefore it knows it's me. Mm -hmm. But if you don't make that connection, you have diddly, you don't know what you're doing. So, but that the graph from Tableau was really cool because I could slice and dice the data to see this F5 beacon um, touched, uh, here, let me hold this here. Okay, so there's this beacon, and then there's a graph for how many other people it touched at the bottom, mm -hmm. and for what duration, right? right. So right. basically it shows Joe was touching Mary, uh, was touching Peter, and then, oh, look at this. Peter was next to Joe for like 600 seconds. That close, that's bad, we better go talk to Peter. Right. So you could do some really cool things. Yeah. Sorry, that was like a 25 minute answer to your 30 second question. <laughs> it's it's more, one of the reasons we love talking to each other. Well, it's and if anybody's listening and if you want to see those graphs or if you want to see any of these flows that I'm talking about, just just ping me and I can um, I'm happy to get on a call. If you have a use case, uh, happy to help and um, I'm not an expert on Tableau, but I could do all the other stuff really well. I'll probably bring a Tableau in to help because I, I've got my dash, my my desktop running. It was it was amazingly easy to do. To uh, I don't know if you've played with a desktop yet from Tableau. All you need I, to do is cook. I haven't actually played with it. I need to get my hands no, on it. No, no. Okay, so it, you'll you'll be blown away. You you download the desktop app. Well, I have a Mac. You probably have a Mac too. I think. I do. I think I say, yeah, yep. yep. So you, you download the app, and then um, the first thing you, it, it, you pick the data source, and guess what the data source is? Salesforce, right? And then it goes out and you map the custom object, in, this, in my case, because remember I tell you uh, the first thing I do is a right to a log. Mm -hmm. So I just yep. took the uh, proximity custom object, mapped it, and it shows all the fields show up right there in front of you. And I'm actually, it's amazing. So okay. it's really easy. You should try it. All right. I need to check that out. So. Note for next week: things to do. <laughs> well, I think we could potentially, Peter, have a, an entire Tableau-inspired episode in the future as well. That's I, the, yeah, the yeah, area you should, that you we should do that. Definitely highly should. recommend. I mean, we did touch on it when we talked to Andrew Price about Einstein and that type of stuff, but yeah, yeah, I think we need to do a bit more of a deeper dive into it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I do. I was just going to ask Charlie. Like we've, we've talked a, we've talked a lot about sort of some some demo scenarios and use cases, but what's an example that you know of of an IoT example that's you know, live in production at scale and and delivering value and benefits that kind of you've seen and you're traveling around and talking to customers. Yeah. Okay. We have a. Um... <laughs> I always use this one, but it, it, it's pretty cool. We just um, relaunched uh, a hot tub <laughs> manufacturer. And I, I was wondering I where this was going. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what's hot tub, what? <laughs> what, yeah. So, um, yeah, it really gets strange looks because people, people envision themselves in a hot tub, right? When, or, and I always show um, an interesting picture in my presentations when I talk about this company. But uh, what's really cool, okay, so they, they're pushing the normal things in where, um, okay, error code 123, what is that? That's a pump failure. Error code 152, that, okay. So they create a case, and then they trigger a workflow, and they notify the appropriate people. Okay, that's really, that's really cool they do that. And they're going from AWS. Their IoT cloud is AWS. And they, um, they push that in as a REST API call and it goes directly into a flow. So, but the other interesting use case is they're using marketing cloud. So what they could do, and, and by the way, they don't just notify themselves that there's a case created, they notify their dealers. Mm -hmm. So the dealers get their information too. And they, 
uh, they have community cloud, right? So mm -hmm. the dealers can log in and see all the data. And um, so what's the marketing cloud use case? Well, they have a turbidity uh, monitor, you know, cloudiness of the water. And if turbidity is X and hours of operation is Y, then guess what? It's time to replace the filter or they need new chlorine tablets. So you can do interesting things like upsell, cross-sell, um, you know, send them coupons, mm -hmm. send them a notification that, hey, guess what? We're having a discount on um, a filter. I'm not saying they're doing that, but um, you know, you could do that sort of interesting thing. But it could thing. also be used for like servicing of, of filters or, you know, those type of things as well. You know, if, if this has happened, then send them that email. So Exactly. Or, you know, if too many cases, and since the dealers are connected, if too many cases are created, uh, you know, maybe it's a maintenance mm. issue. And, or um, what they could do, and I'm not saying they're doing this, um, I'm guessing what a company like this could do. Um, they could say, hey, uh, this customer doesn't already have a service contract and they've had, you know, the life of their tub is getting older. So let's try to upsell them a service contract, right? So um, another one is, that's interesting is, and this company had nothing to do with IoT. They didn't even have to use IoT at all. They relied on a vendor, and it was a vendor, this is a United States company, hmm. and their vendor was, their IoT vendor was in Europe, and they monitored their parking meters in the United States. So it's a parking meter use case. So what can you do with parking meters? Well. Um, it's interesting to see which parking meters are occupied, but what do you really want to know? You want to know when you're going to lose revenue, right? So um, if you uh, don't see any revenue from a machine and this IoT cloud, um, I guess I can name the name of the IoT cloud. It's called um, Flowbird and uh, Kale, C-A-L-E. So it's a Flowbird Calais system. So if anybody out there happens to have connected parking using those vendors, I've already got the integration to that. Um, but they have purchase transactions. So you can see uh, the purchase transactions for every meter and for every, um, they also have terminals, right? Where you, you go to the main, the big thing, right? And you put your credit oh, yeah. card in and you say, I want slot 125 or whatever. So yeah. if one of those goes down, you're you're really messed up, right? Because you're going to lose a lot of revenue because that might be 50 meters right there, right? That you, you program. Um, so what they do is they say, oh, and they're just running uh, Einstein analytics. And they say, oh, look, this, I've got a flat line here at zero, um, create a case. Or in the flow, if purchase transactions is zero for this last run, then create a case, right? Because we need to go out and fix that meter and they can even look at, um, they also have error codes coming in from the meters too. They call them events. So they have events and purchase transactions. And they do a daily uh, dump for their management team showing how much revenue they're, they're generating from their parking meters. So that's an interesting use case too. Just almost knocked my desk apart. Um, certainly a lot, of, a lot of interesting stuff in there. And then, uh, I'm just trying to think about what our next question should be. Oh, yeah. What, what's um, what's well, the know, future I, I can, of some can, of this? Oh, the future. Okay, I'll talk about the future, but this is another uh, COVID-19 use case. Um, the, I've got two patient monitoring, and this is another thing we did um, that I thought was really cool. And this is kind of the future because this is uh, this one's available now. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm, getting all, I'm getting all choked up. Um, <laughs> This is a Metasante device, and you could drop this at a patient's house and monitor their, um, you know, after you check them out from the hospital or if they're, um, as they're going into the hospital, or even if they have a high blood pressure or diabetes. Uh, you drop this at their house, it's, it's GSM connected, and it'll monitor the patient for you. This is really the future. This is a, um, by the way, that's, um, they have their own cloud. Metasante has their own cloud. Oh, hopefully that came through. I was holding it in the right place. Yep. Um, they, um, that was seriously like a two hour integration into, into a, a flow. Um, Amazing. But this one is undergoing FDA approval right now. This is a life signal. And this is a patch that you wear. And I, 
I'll spare you. I won't put it on my, uh, I won't lift up my shirt and put it on for you. Um, this is really cool because this will monitor, um, this is the previous version that they have, they have a new version that is under test and being approved by the FDA. Uh, hopefully I'm not disclosing, I think this is public. I think they've, they've got a video on this publicly posted already because it's going through FDA approval. But um, for, if you're a critical COVID uh, discharge patient, or let's say you're Mark Benioff, right? <laughs> I'm not saying he's using this. No, no, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, so let's say you're my boss, Peter Coffey. I'll say, I'll say Peter, he, I'll abuse him. Uh, uh, let's say he's um, a high risk patient. Um, he can wear this and he can get monitor 24 by seven. And the most, one of the most important things to monitor is SpO2 level, right? So this monitors, it does a full ECG too. It does a full analysis on your heart rate and body temperature. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could do really cool things with, uh, this is coming in the future. And the other thing that's coming, and this is definitely a forward looking statement from a Salesforce standpoint, you'll see more um, investments in flow, okay? So um, even to the point where Process Builder is, you're gonna say, why am I using Process Builder, right? Because flow is becoming yeah. so powerful. I love Process Builder though. I, I love Process <laughs> Builder too. It, but um, Process Builder uh, has a lot of cool functionality, mm. but we're gonna make flow I'm saying we, <laughs> I'm not on the engineering team. The engineering <laughs> team is doing amazing things. They've got some really cool stuff on the roadmap. And I think some of that stuff was already presented on the um, summer 20. Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, you, you, yeah, you mentioned one of the examples earlier, like there were some big advancements in flow in the, in the most recent release around what you can trigger use as the trigger. So the, the platform event, as you talked about the, uh, the record changed, Flow. Record change. Um, yeah, flow. So you've got a lot more options now, which is which is making it really powerful. Um, I've I've built a couple of flows in the last fortnight for the first time, and and managed to to build a lead conversion flow, which I thought was pretty cool. And you know, there's only there was only a handful of steps on it, but it, it does the job. So yeah, it's getting more and more powerful all the time. Was that something yeah. you would have built in code before? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you've got to love that. And this, and I, I, well, I'll caveat that and say this: the lead conversion flow did need a little bit of, of code, but there's a there's basically an action step in the flow that calls a very generic Apex method that that calls the lead convert. But mm -hmm. then you can basically pass those inputs in and out, and then do your own kind of custom logic that you needed to do. That otherwise, yeah, you would be, you know, back in the day, we'd do a Visual Force page for something like yeah. that. Um, or a, or a yep. lightning web component these days. So, um, yeah, getting more and more powerful all the time, and, and that's exciting to hear that um, there's more and more functionality being invested in that area because it allows admins to do more uh, yep. without having to get a developer involved. Yep. And so the, uh, the only thing I do in Flow um, that requires Apex is when I have to talk to external systems, for example. If I have to make an a call out to one of the other IoT clouds, I'll use Apex, right, to do yeah. that. I'll do an HTTP post or something like that. But uh, I would, I would hazard a now. guess maybe that's yeah. one of the things on the roadmap, Charlie, would be uh, perhaps in the future an action step in a flow that lets you do a, an HTTP call out. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. If, if the product team is listening. Um, so what we're saying is flow is the go. Sorry, flow. just had to do it. <laughs> I told you, I told you, flow, flow is my hammer. I love flow. <laughs> um, okay, so we've talked about a whole bunch of things, haven't we, really? Um, one of the things that's, we've, oh, I don't know, now I'm, I'm see, it's at this point in time, I need coffee. Um, MuleSoft, let's talk about MuleSoft in the IA2 oh, world. Okay, yep. Um, you know, what, what role can that play in, I mean, I can see exactly what, what it plays, but let's talk about yeah. that a bit more and what could be done on that. Yeah, so MuleSoft is amazing. I mean, there's, there's a video, did you see the video of the eight-year-old girl uh, building a MuleSoft API integration? No, I didn't see that uh, I'll, I'll send you a link after that, you could tweet no, that it. That sounds um, great. I, I retweeted it a couple of weeks ago. 
I think it was one of the Salesforce employees' daughters. Wow. A, and she goes, hi, I'm Jennifer, and I'm going to build an API integration. And, and she built it like, yeah, yeah. And she did it all by herself. I don't, I didn't even see any, you know, cuts in the video. And yep. I think she did it all herself. Anyway, wow. um, I, I'm not avoiding your question. MuleSoft is, is an amazing IoT integration tool, especially when you have multiple uh, API points. Yep. You need to, to have coming in to a, a single org, for example, right? So if you have more than one, okay, so if you have one uh, IoT event stream coming in, and you're only going to do one thing with it. I mean, you could argue that, oh, you can either go direct from that, if that has a capability to go from that IoT cloud directly using an OAuth, and OAuth isn't heavy lifting. You could argue you can just go direct. But, um, or maybe you can use Heroku, right? And just build an endpoint in a Node.js app and post into the endpoint. Yeah. And that, that could take you, and you could do that, and don't tell the sales guys I said this, but I've got a whole bunch of, uh, <laughs> You could do a lot for like seven bucks a month on Heroku, right? How many how many events are you going to feed it, right? You won't even exceed your Heroku uh, Dino limit, right? Don't tell the sales guy that. So. Okay, but MuleSoft, if you have more than one of those, right, coming in from disparate locations, um, that's where MuleSoft becomes really powerful. And there was some survey we did that just came out like a couple days ago that an average company has like 700. <laughs> I can't imagine where they came up, how they came up with this number, but even if it's only 70, 700 integration points at, at every, every company. Wow. Uh, I got, I got to see that okay. survey. Yeah. One of our, I, I gotta, I gotta go vet that. That sounds like a made up number, but even if it's 70, 70 sounds more reasonable, but they said 700. Um, but when you have multiple integration points, it's great to normalize those uh, feeds into your org, right? Mm -hmm. um, bring them all in, normalize the way you're doing it, and then that makes it so much easier to maintain everything, right? Could you imagine if you had, okay, let's say you have three, and let's strictly talk about IoT. You have three different event streams coming in that you're feeding into three different platform events. Um, that, and they're all different, right? Mm. That you, you feed them into three different points and say, where you can just build one platform event that has multiple fields. And then you could push it in through one single location in MuleSoft, go many to one, and then you're done. You only have to maintain one side of it. So you get yeah. what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Very powerful. It's a very, very powerful in that transformation of data, not just the, the plumbing of the data, but the transformation of it on the way through as well, so. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so what are other exciting things to what where can you see this going with IoT and Salesforce and this will be very much a forward looking statement I would think <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I see more and more um, I'm on a mission to I'm on two missions one mission is a mission that's why I'm wearing my equality shirt a mission for equality for all mm -hmm. um, but the other mission <laughs> the other part of my mission is to um get more IOT clouds set up, right? So um, the no brainers are done, the AWS, the GCP, the Azure, AT&T, we got Telstra now. We have, I was on the phone, I, I seem to be one of the, doing almost one a day, talking to IOT vendors. And I want them to put a Salesforce easy button on their IOT cloud. Mm -hmm. So I can see it in the near future where an admin doesn't even have to, because you're going to see IoT more and more. Guess what? COVID has brought IoT in, back into the mm -hmm. for, forefront because of all the reasons I said, you know, the thermal scanning and the, and the proximity sensors and the, everything else is going on with COVID. You need to automate all this stuff with the, the aura ring even. Um, but the, the mission should be to get the easy button set up so that the poor admin doesn't have to um, spin up, um, you know, another MuleSoft API integration 
uh, if they don't need to. It should be on the IoT cloud side where mm -hmm. there's a Salesforce easy button. And then maybe you, maybe you would still need MuleSoft, but at least the heavy lifting wouldn't be, you wouldn't have to do the work on the IoT cloud side, right? You could do it on the Salesforce side, but it's clicks and not code. Right now you have to think there's some heavy lifting on uh, every one of these new vendors. I'm, okay, so example, Actility, right? Um, one called, uh, I should, I should get my list. I've got a list of 25 I've done in the past year. Okay. Wow. Right. 25 integrations from vendors. So what Flowbird was an example of one. Um, let's see, what was the other one? Oh, Orange in France. Um, they actually, I spent half a day workshop with them and we built it and they said, okay, that's great. Now I want you to rebuild everything again and we're going to record everything. <laughs> and then, and then they built a um, 25 page document on how to integrate it into Salesforce from their Orange um, IoT network. Okay. So uh, I want to make it as easy as possible for people to take their event data from devices mm -hmm. and push it into Salesforce. Which would be extremely powerful. And again, just imagine the data that you can get from that, what you can do with it. Mm. And exactly. I think you know, maybe to kind of finish up is where does where does Einstein potentially play a part in this to say to take two events that are coming in from different streams perhaps that on their own they don't look like anything's wrong but when you put some AI over and it says actually this temperature sensor went off over here and you know 30 seconds later you know this shock sensor like you talk about went off over here maybe those are connected in some way and you know independently we wouldn't have thought anything of them but once we start to see the big picture we start to you know and you need machine learning and ai to kind of make sense of that you start to get these insights um which become really really valuable yes and you just nailed it but you need to add one more thing to that so you have the disparate data sources coming in and we remember we we want the anomalies right yeah so you've got anomaly a anomaly b but guess what what makes that 10 times more powerful what is einstein connected to in the org right everything einstein mm. can be connected to any object or any custom object that you have in your org and einstein is constantly learning right so if you take that event stream data from uh, the anomaly data from those IoT events, you could do some powerful things, uh, again, defining the outcome. What is the outcome? A case is created, right? A case just got created when this happened and that happened. Well, Einstein can figure that out because it's got the Salesforce um, custom object or standard object data that it's working against. And when you, when you triangulate using what Einstein is connected to in Salesforce, you could do very powerful things. Another example of that, okay, let's say um, that hot tub uh, customer I was talking about earlier. Um, what else do they have in there in Salesforce? They have, uh, they have their customer data in an account. What does the account data have? It has geographic location. What happens if um, product manager starts seeing a whole bunch of weird failures? Cases are getting created. Um, Einstein could figure out that maybe it's happening when the humidity is a certain level and it's because the geography uh, is in Florida, right? You know, yep. the customer set is in Florida, so Einstein could figure that out. Hey, wait, all, only um, hot tubs are failing in Florida where the humidity is greater than X or maybe where I live mm. where the humidity is. I, I don't know. I'm using that as a, as a bad example, but you get it, right? Yeah. The, Think of the things that Einstein's operating against that it can leverage with, the, in addition to the uh, anomaly data. Hmm. Excellent. Very it's good. a very exciting future. Yeah. And as we yes. come up on the the one hour mark that's flowing by, uh, maybe that's oh my a gosh. good point to to wrap things up. But um, just want to finish, Charlie, by saying a, a big thank you for taking time out of your evening to, to have a chat to Peter and I. It's, uh, it's been an absolutely fascinating discussion. Really appreciate it, man. Thanks for, thanks for your time. Well, thanks for inviting me. And a big, huge shout out. I miss 
everybody. I missed the entire Ohana. I wish I could see you and hug you again. And uh, thank you, look everybody. For, for look being the day that we can do that again. Yep. Yeah, we'll see you down under again sometime, Charlie, I'm sure. I will be there. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you again next week.